Art and Literature in the Enlightenment. Art and literature moved in new directions. It was inspired by Enlightenment ideas of order and reason. Artists and architects worked to show balance and elegance in their work. The neoclassical period was from 1660 to 1798, neo meaning new. It followed the basic forms and ideals of the classical period. It had sonatas, minuets, and the rondo, and was made up of thematic material that was developed, altered, and repeated, the famous A, B, A scale. So you would have a piece of music, then you would have another piece of music, and then you would repeat the first piece of music. This was the style that was common during the neoclassical period. Classical music had creative richness, but yet it was also simple, balanced, and non-emotional. Some famous artists during the classical period were Haydn, Mozart, and Beethoven. Haydn, also known as the father of the symphony and the father of the string quartet, was an Austrian who composed 104 symphonies. He was known for developing the sonata and the symphony. Mozart was known for his operas, particularly The Marriage of Figaro and The Magic Flute, and he wrote his first opera at age 12. Beethoven composed nine symphonies, his fifth and ninth being his most famous symphonies and his most famous string quartets in those pieces. The novel was also a new form that developed during this time period. It was very popular. Novels at this time period told lengthy stories with many plot twists that explored the thoughts and feelings of characters. These were prose fiction. They were popular with middle class. They were entertaining stories told in the vernacular, the everyday language of the people. Two English novelists of note would be Samuel Richardson and Daniel Defoe, but Samuel Rif and Henry Fielding. Samuel Richardson is known for Pamela. That was the name of his, the first true English novel, Pamela. And it told the story of a young servant girl who refused the advances of her master. Henry Fielding wrote a comic masterpiece called Tom Jones. The hero of the book is an orphan who has been kicked out of his adopted home. He travels all over England and overcomes numerous obstacles to win the hand of his lady. Daniel Defoe was the author of Robinson Crusoe, and this is the story of a sailor stranded on a tropical island. Before the form of the novel, most of the books that people had had to do with the church and they were pieces of nonfiction. The Enlightenment period also affected the monarchy. Views on the monarchy form of government from Enlightenment thinkers' perspectives was that they believed that monarchs were the best form of government as long as the ruler respected the rights of his people. Monarchs who followed Enlightenment philosophy were known as enlightened despots, D-E-S-P-O-T-S. -E Frederick the Great of Prussia is an example of this. Because of his belief in Enlightenment philosophy, he gave his people religious freedom, reduced censorship, improved schooling, and reformed the justice system. However, he did nothing to end serfdom, so it wasn't a perfect uh, reform. He also abolished the use of torture as a part of the justice system. His most important contribution was his attitude toward being called, toward being king. Instead of having everyone serve him, he called himself the first servant of the state. So he looked at the relationship slightly differently than previous monarchs who saw themselves as everyone being servants to them. He saw himself as, as king, as being a servant to his country. Another enlightened despot would be Joseph II of Austria. He was probably the most radical reformer of the time. He ended serfdom, but unfortunately after he died, um, the nobles who owned the land reinstated serfdom and undid his reforms. But during his rule, he ordered that peasants be paid for labor in cash. He supported freedom of worship for Protestants, Orthodox Christians, and Jews. And he would rule Austria from 1780 to 1790, so only a 10-year period, but he did some radical reforms during that time. Unfortunately, though, after he died, those reforms didn't stick, and the nobles then undid his reforms and brought things back to their previous state. Catherine the Great of Russia, who is pictured here, worked hard. She tried to end serfdom, 
but a bloody peasant revolt convinced her to change her mind. She decided that the peasants weren't ready for that kind of freedom. Instead, she gave the nobles even more power over the serfs. So she was very uh, interested in the Enlightenment movement and a student and agreed with it in theory. But after the peasants had this violent revolt, she thought they couldn't possibly, you know, that was idealist, too idealistic. And so in order to make sure that didn't happen again, she actually gave the nobles more power over the lives of the peasants. They were called serfs in, in Russia. She also, though, she did give she did gain new land for Russia. She divided Poland with Prussia and Austria, and she won control of the northern shore of the Black Sea. Now, the Enlightenment also had a great impact on the American Revolution. The background to the Revolution was that the 13 colonies enjoyed self-government and began to see themselves as less, less and less as British subjects. The high cost of the French and Indian War had led Parliament to pass laws that put taxes on the colonists. Parliament had no members from the colonies, though, so there were no members in, in the colonies that served as representatives in Parliament. And therefore, it had no right to pass laws that affected the colonies. And as, in response, uh, the colonists boycotted British goods. Americans started fighting from 1775 to 1781 to try to win their independence. The British people grew tired of the cost of this war and urged Parliament to a degree to a peace. The French would come to the aid of the Americans. Eventually, the Americans signed a treaty in 1783 with Britain which recognized American independence. Americans created a republic. The new government, though, they first created was very weak. It was based on the Articles of Confederation. Congress had severely limited powers under this document, which was passed in March 1st, 1781. It basically was a loose confederation. They could not collect taxes. They had no control over foreign commerce. They could pass laws but could not force states to comply to them. Eventually, they would change from the Articles of Confederation to the Constitution in 1788 which drew on many Enlightenment ideas. Locke, based on Locke, they put power in the hands of the people. Based on Voltaire, they protected people's rights to free speech and freedom of religion. Montesquieu's federal system, which included separation of powers into three branches of government, was adopted, with each branch being able to prevent the other branches from abusing their power. It also included a Bill of Rights, protection of rights added to the Constitution so that it would be approved by all the states. Bill of Rights protected civil rights and civil liberties. These are just some of the ways that the Enlightenment had an impact on art and literature, on monarchs at the time, and on the birth of a new republic.